Good evening, everyone, um, and thank you for making the time um, to join us this evening for our HealthBridge Clinical um, webinar. My name is Yvonne. I've been part of the HealthBridge family for 15, it'll be 15 years in, in December, um, at, and I head up the, the client experience teams. Um, over the 15 years, I've looked after different portfolios from marketing to, to product, um, and now more recently, um, our end-to-end -end client, um, client experience. And more importantly, why I think I get invited to, um, to, to host uh, these webinars is I had the privilege of, of working with the, the product team that was responsible for um, developing and launching the, the HealthBridge Clinical um, product. So I always joke that I, I get to be Jared's um, lovely assistant um, for the evening. And on that note, I'll, I'll let Jared introduce himself. Well, cool. thanks, Yvonne. I'm Jared. Uh, also been at HealthBridge for 15 years. Um, I left a few years ago, came back specifically to work on uh, the EMR project, um, something that I was passionate and excited about. I'm the head of products. So I was um, part of the team that worked hard with doctors to to make the, the products a reality. Um, yeah, and I look forward to, to showing you a little bit about um, you know, our EMR, what to look out for, um, and yeah. That's about it. Cool. Thanks, Jared. And and maybe just before Jared gets um, gets started, certainly one of the things um, I, I'd like to to share by way of introduction is really the the principle and the key approach that the team followed um, when when developing um, our EMR, as Jared has referred to it, Healthbridge Clinical, and that was really to to work with with doctors. So the team worked with a, a team of doctors to design the product in such a way that it worked the way um, doctors work, and very importantly, that it didn't get in the way of the the very valuable patient doctor relationship. And hopefully, um, in tonight's demo, you'll see um, when when Jared takes you through the product, just how simple it is to use when a patient um, is with you and also how, how quickly um, it will be for a doctor to be able to adopt um, the EMR and, and relatively quickly and quite simply um, let go and, and move from the traditional patient uh, paper file to a, a digital um, EMR. And last thing from, from me before I hand over to Jared, just some housekeeping. So at any point um, during the demo, if you've got a question, please pop that through um, uh, using the, the q and It's normally at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. I'll, I'll keep um, looking at the questions that are coming through and I'll interrupt um, Jared at the appropriate time just to pause and, and really to answer um, some questions. So please feel free to, to pop questions through. Um, you would have seen at the beginning um, of of our, of our webinar. If you do have questions um, after the webinar or at any point, um, you know, tomorrow or, or any point, um, please send that through to webinar at healthbridge.co.za and um, either one of us will reach out um, to you and, and answer and answer any question that you may have. Um, our digital brand manager will also be sharing the recording. So uh, this evening's um, webinar is recorded. We'll be sharing that. Um, it should uh, be available in your inbox um, to tomorrow. And then the last thing is that we just ask for you to take a few seconds at the end of the webinar just to answer a quick uh, a quick questionnaire, um, just really to let us know um, uh, what you thought about this evening's webinar and if there's any areas that um, that we can improve on. And that's that's it from me. I'll hand over to you, Jared. Cool. Thanks, Yvonne. <clears throat> um, I'm going to share screen shortly. So I'll, I'll try to do, do this in around 30 to 40 minutes uh, just to leave time for questions um, and anything particular to show. There is a lot, uh, a lot of content to this. So I, I'm going to stick to kind of the key concepts and themes that are important to be aware of um, when you know, when deciding on what an EMR, which EMR, how to use an EMR, which one's right for your practice and, and what to consider. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so so when everyone thinks about clinical systems and EMRs, the first thing they think about is kind of the clinical side to it. Uh, one aspect that is often overlooked is the integration and the, the seamlessness that needs to be there with the, with the admin and the front staff. 
So just by way of a tour, um, what you're looking at now is the HealthBridge clinical uh, EMR landing page. So as the doctor, when you log in, you can get a sense of your day. So you can see your calendar, you can see the patients that are, are there, um, are scheduled for the day. You can see who's checked in. So effectively, who's in your waiting room. Uh, you can see Brian is there 15 minutes ago. You can see Brian is a telehealth consult, which I'll show you a bit, uh, in a little while. Frank Mode arrived an hour ago and so did Edna Jane and Bob has been there in progress with a doctor or nurse for two hours. So while the clinical side is important and, and we'll delve into that and, and it's you know it's key to have a clinically rich record with all the, the patient information, it's often overlooked that you know this has to work for both the admin side of the practice and the and the practitioners. So if, if from the admin's perspective, they'll carry on working inside the, the management, the, the PMA or the admin side as they normally would. They would schedule appointments, they'd manage the accounts. So what you're looking at now is my MPS and the my MPS calendar um, where the admin person would, would work and live. Um, but at the same time, while they don't have a clinical view, you as the doctor will be able to get a sense of exactly what is happening in your practice. Not only for you, but if there's more than one doctor, you can, you can look into the other doctor's diaries um, or see the nurse's diary or from a nurse perspective, they can see which patients are waiting there and who should be picked up next to, to potentially go for the pre-consult. Um, so this really important and I, and I can't stress enough um, and working with doctors, the little things were pointed out. So um, for instance, you wanna know why the patient's there. So you can uh, see a note uh, so Edna writes, the patient su uh, suspects they have COVID. That comes from the admin person sending a note to you, the provider. Uh, so Frank Mode, I can see is wheezing in a tight chest. Um, I can see also Brian Smithers is there, but it's a telehealth consult. And you, I can see that by the little, little camera icon. And if Brian was already online, that camera icon would indicate that the patient is waiting for me. So while clinical and, is and important. Yeah. Yeah, Jared, I just want to, sorry to interrupt you, but just to be how how seamless the the my MPS, in other words, the the cloud-based PMA and the Healthbridge clinical product work work hand in hand. I think that's yeah, it, exactly. So so if I if a if a patient comes in as a as a walk-in patient, um, I will say it's Brian Smithers. Um, if I do if the admin person does that, and we'll we'll do this as a let's say it's a telephonic consult, saves it. It'll then be, oh, that patient's already here in the practice, but it'll be, be added to the waiting room and you'll see it immediately from the doctor's perspective. Um, you can also log in as a doctor on your phone um, and there's a mobile view so you can see over your day before you get to work, how many patients you have, when's your first patient, what are the type of visits, that type of thing. So really, really important. That leads us to, to the next um, the next step. So when I open a patient file, so I will choose, uh, let's say Frank Mode. I, I simply clicked on him from the waiting room and it opens up his um, electronic patient record. What I see here with Frank, and again, we, we are not clinicians. So we worked with what we termed uh, our design doctors. So we got a group of diverse GPs to work with us um, to design what needs to be there. So things like, when a patient, when I open a patient file, I need to be able to see some talking points that I can put in. So I know that Frank's divorced, he likes cooking, enjoys spinning, and I will just quickly add he's he bends now as a as a silly example. Um, so it's it's not just the clinical stuff. I can, you know, it's also the, the the talking points, the relatedness with the patient. But I can see the clinical information. I can see that Frank had a uh, his appendix removed. He's an asthmatic. He's on Ventolin. Uh, he wa he's also on Zaynor and there's, he's got two kids, Edna and John, Jonathan. Um, he's also a social drinker, he's a smoker, and he's quite stressed. So, so the stuff I need to know, um, either before the patient walks in or when the patient walks in, I can see here, I can scroll down, and I can see that I, I saw um, Frank on the 5th, was for a upper respiratory infection. This is complete bogus test data. So in case you're wondering, he's also got an open wound on his toe, edema, and he was falling on a playground. But as the as the doctor, it's really important to see, okay, he was here on the 5th, he was here on the 10th for insomnia, um, I prescribed Dormican, and it just, it gives me that full clinical record. It's the equivalent of having the yellow file in front of you. Um, 
everything at your fingertips, the right information for you. At the same time, you'll see down the right hand side here, there's a, a summary panel that remains there throughout the consultation process. Right now I'm focusing on the patient file, but this will always be there for you to reference. So if you're now in the consultation flow, we can still see that um, Frank is uh, severely allergic to penicillin, he's got his asthma, he's hypertensive, he's on his Ventolin and he has some, some lifestyle um, information that is pertinent to you. Uh, it also, let's actually see if, if, I, if I just switch patient files at the top here, I can see Edna Mode for instance oh, has a patient liable amount of 705 Rand. So if you want to see, see that information, you can hover over here. You'll also see that there's a Ghani section for Edna because Edna's female, whereas Frank doesn't have the Ghani section. So, um, so what I'm, yeah, Jared, sorry. Maybe just a question that's popped through is um, uh, how did that information that um, just, your Edna had an outstanding amount um, land up there? Yeah, yeah, great. So this, this speaks to, again, the integration with, with the admin side, so with the, the PMA. Even though this is specifically designed for, for doctors, it still has, it shares the same uh, platform as what the admin person would use. So any pertinent information such as what scheme they're on, what plan they're on, any outstanding amount, uh, whether they have benefits or no benefits is indicated. Um, that all of that comes from the admin person having created the file in the record on, on the admin side, it then pulls into the clinical side. Thanks, Jared. In terms of, of this information, some of this clinical information is generated as you go through the clinical consultation. So if I diagnose Frank with um, whatever it might be, hypertension, I can then it'll then populate here afterwards. So it, it keeps it updated and relevant, which I'll show you. Um, some of the other fields are simply uh, click driven. So if I, if I want to ask Frank some information, he's first time patient, what is your surgical history? I can just go add a surgery. He says, I, I had back surgery. And uh, if it's you know, a tonsillectomy, for an example. So this speaks to the ease and, and the speed that we focused on continuously. The one thing that kept getting hammered into us when we were designing the solution by the by design doctors was make it quick, make it easy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to type out. I don't want to have to see long lists. It needs to, you know, if I, if I want to do lifestyle, I need to be able to click on it and say they're married or, or divorced. They are a light smoker and they're bent and they are highly stressed and go back to the overview. It's got to be easy for me to do. And yeah. Other important things to note uh, in terms of this, this overview, as I mentioned, there's uh, the timeline underneath, which you can see, which is really powerful. You can, you can open um, previous prescriptions. I'm just going to go to a patient that has some, some scanned documents, uh, one of these should here. So if, um, if I click on Brian Jones, so you can manage multiple files at the same time. If I scroll down here, I can see the historical paper notes that have been scanned in by my admin person. And if I, if I want to reference those, I can click on it and then it'll open up the, the yellow file that I had previously. At the same time, you can scan in other documents. So you can drag in images, PDFs. Uh, if I scroll down here, there's a radiology result. These you can, you can put in if there are pathology that we have integrated with Empath, Lancet and Pathcare. Um, and we're busy working with um, another lab, that's the name, so for Mark, Mark. Um, to also integrate there, thanks. So it, it's, again, everything that you'd expect in the, in the patient's paper file, just trying to make it easier. Um, for you, you can filter. I just want to see the diagnoses. I just want to see my clinical metrics I previously captured. I want to add a quick note, patient called for path results. Uh, not yet re available, let's say, full stop. And I can add that to the file. Just an easy way to, to make sure that everything is recorded in there. Yvonne, I think, I think that covers the, the overview. Um, there's other little nifty bells and whistles that I'm, I'm not even getting into 
uh, you know, if, if you want to quickly see something about a, a family member, you can click on it. If there's path results, you can open it directly from here. Um, but I think I've I've given it yeah. quite a bit of airtime. Absolutely. I was just going to reinforce what I'm, I mentioned in the beginning, which was the the ability to to transition from a paper file to a, a digital file. And certainly, I remember sitting in those design sessions where we got great guidance from doctors where at least from what I can recall, it was, you know, you might not need to scan the whole, the entire patient file for all patients, but certainly maybe the first, you know, the last couple of consoles, the first three or so pages, and that's what you showed yeah. where you can, you know, you, you can bring that in, scan it, and at least you've got, you know, you, you've got a consolidated um, record for that, uh, for that patient, the, the previous paper, and now, you know, moving digital. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the one thing our consultants help with uh, when signing up is what process do you take to scan your records? Mm -hmm. So things we've seen work really well, um, instead of trying to scan your lifetime of, of paper results, is to have a sticker system. So the doctor has, let's say, three color stickers. Uh, yellow means scan the whole file. So the patient comes in, it's still a paper file, they'll check the file and say, okay, I actually only need the front page yellow sticker or it's an acute patient, I don't need to know about their sore throat five years ago, uh, green sticker, just don't even scan it, or red sticker, scan all of it, because it's a chronic patient, for instance, and there's a lot of relevant information there. Um, and it's worked well to do it as a patient comes in, scan it, and then archive it, rather than trying to, trying to scan through all your records. Um, maybe, Jared, just before you, you break your train of thought there, another question. Um, can my clinical notes be accessed by another practitioner on HealthBridge? Um, my thought was, if so, it will um, greatly assist other practitioners when consulting with the client. Yeah, also a great question. So if the practitioner is part of your practice, uh, then you will be able to access the different patient files. If it is outside of your, your billing practice. We are very um, data conscious, conscious and poppy compliant. And we, we just trying to make sure, you know, that we are very tight there. So we don't share patient information across practices unless um, you're within the same practice. But I will show you how to do a referral note and the referral letter will, will generate all of this content um, should the patient be going to another doctor or a specialist. Well, thanks. We've got another question, but I think you'll answer it when you when you go through the clinical notes. So I'll hold off on that one. Cool. Okay. Perfect. So, so let's the the one other thing I just wanted to mention, um, which is for for different patients, you'll see slightly different options. So for Edna, I will see growth charts because Edna is a, um, a baby. She's three months old, and I can plot the growth charts. If I go to um, a, a female, we'll have a gynae section. The, the other thing is general screening, so a great way to, to keep track of, of results that have come in, or let's say we did a, a C-reactive protein test, um, you can add that as a, as a screening item that you want to come back to and check and make sure, and, and the system will alert you when the next screening is based on, on rules that you set, which is quite nice as well. Okay, so let's, let's jump into the consultation now. Um, there's, there's two modes to, or there's a few modes to the consultation. I'm going to show you the simplest one first, um, which is a, a trimmed, slim version of a consultation. And then I'll show you kind of the, the, big, uh, the bigger one with all the bells and whistles. It's important that we don't try to force um, a doctor into, into working in one specific way. Even with our design doctors, we had some that liked to type, some that liked to click, some that wanted templates, some that didn't want templates. So we've made it configurable. And the first version I'll show you is the, is the basic consultation flow. So I'm gonna say start consult for Frank. Um, down the right hand side here, it's enabled a space for me to type notes, um, put any attachments or, or take a photo. Um, if there's something that I want to take a photo for. And then this is a very basic mode where you can say patient complains of and then sore throat, uh, headache, or whatever it might be. Um, very much uh, friendly for the typers and, and doctors who can type and are happy to type. And then you say on observation or, or however you, you prefer to do your notes. Then you'll, you'll select a diagnosis. 
uh, this patient already has uh, is asthmatic and hypertensive, so it's it's there ready for you to select, so, or you can search for an IC10 code. I can say bronchitis um, and select it. It just takes into account my my spelling. I'm going to choose. Um, let's go with uh, diabetes. Uh, so we'll go uh, E11.6. Now I can now pin that to the patient's record. So because I, I pin it, you'll now see as, as part of the, the record down the right hand side, you not only they um, have hypertensive heart disease with heart failure and asthma, but they're also type 2 diabetic. And next time I open Frank's file, I can see, here we go, type 2 diabetic. So it's, it's just really easy to, to kind of build up that clinical information without having to jump all over the place. If I go to the medicines now, it'll tell me if there's any medicines prescribed in the last 30 days. A lot of effort was spent uh, working in the medicine space. So because I, I, I selected type two diabetes, the, the categories here at the bottom of, of medicines have already suggested that I might want blood glucose lowering drugs or insulins. Um, and that'll change based on the IC10 code that I've selected while the top categories here are kind of your, your typical things that you would prescribe or dispense. Uh, so I'll say antibiotics as an example, and the system will then show your antibiotics that you frequently prescribe. So it's, it's a smart system where it, it's learning as you're prescribing and dispensing, it knows you often give Amoxil and Augmentin, um, and it'll suggest these things. And as soon as I hit Amoxil, I can quickly add the dosage information that again, the system has learned so typically I do five mils three times a day for five days. Um, and I will say, let's say uh, stat as an example, if there's additional instructions, let's say take off the food, just really the, 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 it's down to the ease again of, of being able to just go click, 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 add it in. So if I want Zithromax, I go click one tablet three times a day, allow generics dispense and it's done. That's not only is it adding it to that clinical record, mm. but you'll now have your, your prescription or any dispensing information. I've done a whole bunch on this encounter already. Um, and then you can simply print or email the script if you will like. Um, it's got a digital signature. So I'll, I'll quickly show you um, how that looks, but it'll have your logo at the top we can put in. It's got your digital signature here. If it's schedule six, you can turn off the digital signature and print it. If it's uh, schedule four, for instance, you can email it to the patient or email it to the, the, the pharmacy if you were close to, close to one or if you um, patient has a preference, you can have an address book um, of, of all the pharmacies and you can just simply hit email in and send it through. Some of, I just wanna see is uh, Frank is on discovery. So if I go to a blood glucose lowering drugs, as an example, I can filter to the formularies. Okay, there's none on, on his plan, let's see if I, but if, if they're on, let's say classic comprehensive, I can show, say, show me only the formularies that are applicable to, to this scheme for this patient. So as the, as the, as the doctor, I can know which, which medicine will be covered, uh, which is really helpful. You can filter to generics. So there's here, sorry, there's an example of the formulary. So for analgesics, for discovery, I know that discovery will cover the Adco Pro Leaf, um, but not the, the tramadol. So a lot of uh, this, I mean, the, our doctors really got involved with designing this. It's like, I want to see if they're registered for it at a scheme. I want to see if without penicillin, um, without opioids, show me only my syrups. Um, all, all these kind of things that might go through, show me the history of, of medicines. So if I want to quickly repeat a script that I did previously, I can do it in, in two clicks. Those are the type of things that, you know, we can build stuff, but it's only really with the help of doctors that we can, we can build the things that will make it quick and easy for, for the system to, you know, to facilitate and not, not slow things down. Uh, and Jared, if I can, if I can just add a compliment to to the team, uh, there, there's some stuff you've shown tonight. I think it's probably been a maybe probably only in the last four weeks. So I've maybe missed two sprints, and there's already new stuff. And and certainly the team. Not only did you spend time with the design doctors, but I think with you know, as we've gone to market, just the 
I can see the feedback that the team is getting uh, as we've brought doctors on board is, is being incorporated. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. The, so I can tell you what's coming out um, in the future and then in the next couple of weeks and months based on feedback from doctors. So the one thing doctors have requested is, is show me, let me select medicine and show me the generics of it. That's the one thing. And then the other is price. Um, I want to see mm -hmm. the price and I want to see relevant price. So if I choose Lipitor, I know, you know, we can indicate that the price is, is quite high in comparison to, to the, the generics um, as an example. Very cool. um, there, there's, a lot, there's so many little things I'm not even touching on. Um, I can get the, pharma, the same pharmaceutical information. So if I click on this one from Oxal, I can see the ingredients, uh, indications, pediatric dosages, adverse effects. Um, so we have that for the, for the popular meds. Um, so if I, if I deselect type 2 diabetes, let's say uh, the RC10 code is asthma, you'll now see that the dynamic category at the bottom is, is no longer um, glucose controlling drugs, but now it's inhalants. And yeah, so it'll change again. It's dynamic. As you click on that, it'll bring you up a list of meds that you typically use. And there again, I can see immediately Simbacord is, is covered by the formulary. That's a great one. I can just add that to inhalers, 30 days dispense or prescribe depending on, depending on the practice. Cool. I'm going to carry on down um, under the plan section. So I, I think you'll already kind of see that there's a, the SOAP element to it. I've, I've clicked here and I've done the, the, the subjective, objective, I've done assessment, I'm now doing the plan. I can do a sick note. I can then decide whether I want to include the RC10 code or not. Um, again, it has your signature, it has the letterhead. If there's other information, please note that is important uh, that the patient needs to come back for a follow up during the next week, or whatever is a, you know, needs to be on the sick note, you can, you can edit it. You can SMS a patient. So if it, it, you can say to the patient, I want to do a follow-up visit in one month time. And I want to also mention, please come fasted. Maybe you're doing some, some blood tests for them. You can then send this SMS or, or cue this SMS rather. And just before, it'll send the SMS pretty much in a month's time. Two days shy of a month to be precise. Then there are referral letters. I will quickly generate one. I'll say create a new template. Uh, it'll pop up the referral letter with all your information in, all the patient's information, and all the relevant uh, info from the, from the patient file. So what are their allergies? What are their conditions? What are the notes? If you don't want the, the, the doctor to know that they are divorced and they love cooking shows, you can remove that. Uh, it's got everything I've, I've typed up now in this consultation. So in the symptom notes that the, what the patient was complaining of, uh, all the medicines we prescribed, it's got the previous visit. Uh, you can amend this, you can say, please call me after the patient's been there. Um, and you can email this through or print it out for the, for the patient. Okay, so that's, that's the simple mode. Um, simple, fast, quick and easy. If you are familiar and once you're familiar with the system, it is really quick to use. You know, you start the consult, um, this patient has bronchitis, we can click on bronchitis, we can choose an antibiotic, add it there, uh, let's give them amoxyl, dispense it, and another feature is the templatize these things. If, if there's something you see frequently, uh, so tonsillitis, as a, a silly example, you can you can create a template. You'll, you'll go through the consultation. You'll you'll choose your diagnosis, your medicine, whatever it might be, and you can then save that as a template. Um, or if you have a COVID protocol that you do, you can save that as a template. And then next, when a patient comes in, you diagnose them with that. You simply add this, and it'll do everything: the RC10 code, the tariff codes, the consumables, the the, the prescription, the dosage information. Um, so it really is another way of, of just trying to speed things up. The Jared, I, I think it's very cool when you do it very quickly because it shows the power of the system and how quickly it is. Too fast. Sometimes get feedback when we've done previous webinars. So slow. I'll dial it back. Slow down. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, sorry, I, I, I kind of get no, car- no, but, carried away. But I think it's important just to show, like, once you, you know, once you're familiar with it, just how quick and easy it is to to use. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna turn on um, a more uh, clinical rich uh, version. So if you give me one second, you don't have to follow my clicking here. This is me just uh, turning on all different things just to make sure that it's all ready. Okay, so I will go to Brian Jones now. Um, I can see when I open the file, enjoys hiking, asthmatic, diabetic, hypertensive, they start a consultation. Now on this, on this version, um, you'll see a reason for visit. These are uh, templates that we worked with the doctors to create. Um, so if I click on, I'll click on COVID because it's topical. Um, you'll see I now have a symptom section that allows me to simply click instead of, of typing. So if I'm not comfortable with typing, um, I can just say, do you have a fever? Yes. Are you coughing? Yes. Do you have a sore throat? No. If there's things I don't want to click on, I don't have to. Um, the patient says I've had, a, I've got a headache, but it only started this morning. I can say, add a note to that, started this morning. And you'll see down the right hand side here that as I'm doing this, it is building up that clinical record of that consultation. So, and you can work as a hybrid mode. So if you enjoy some of the templates, so for instance, a lot of our doctors like the, um, the chronic ones, they like the pregnancy visit, the HIV visit, uh, the body systems, but they may not be a fan of always using it for all the different templates. That's fine. You can, you can select which ones uh, you like to work with. You can still add a symptom note here. Uh, you can say on observation, uh, rash on, you know, legs or, or lower back, whatever it might be. Um, so again, it, it's about making sure that we don't force, force you into working one way. And that's the next kind of theme that I, I just really want to stress. Um, you know, as, uh, there are tons of, of EMRs out there with a lot of rich clinical information that work really well. Uh, having said that, you want something that doesn't force you into one flow. If, if you don't, the way we've, we've gone about it is if you don't want to do the reason for visits, so these templates at the top, you can turn it off. Um, if you want to have more structured information or less, so it's, it really is about making sure there's um, the right config for, for your practice. Um, Jared, just on, I'm going to interrupt you there with the, Please the do. that came through, which is, I guess, another mode of working. Um, is it possible for a practitioner to speak into the system instead of, of typing um, or selecting from options? Yes, so, so we've got a, um, a pilot that we're doing with, with voice. The, the thing with the voice, it's a, we're using a Google. It works nicely. For some people, we have a lot of different dialects and accents in South Africa uh, and also the medical terms. So right now, the, the, the predominant way of working is, is typing or, or clicking um, with, with voices in pilot. It's, to be honest, it's voice is really hit and miss depending on the, on the doctor and, and how quickly they speak and how they articulate it. So we haven't enabled that for the, for the market yet. The other thing that we're looking at doing is, is stylus support for, for the iPad. Really the focus has been on getting the essential things that you need um, done and, and working easily and simply. And from there, uh, we're moving to kind of the we can get to play with bells and whistles and integrated devices and scales that feed the, the weight through and, and that type of stuff. Um, but right now, the predominant way is typing and clicking. The, um, the exa- I've enabled the examination section here. If, if you're working with a, a nurse, uh, they can do the vitals before. Um, and you'll be able to, you'll see it here under today's captured metrics. You'll also see a note from the nurse if they say um, the elevated blood pressure, please recheck or, or anything like that. Um, if, if you don't work with a nurse, that's fine. You can still capture the vitals and metrics. It also has the previous ones here. So if this patient isn't growing, you can just click on the previous weight or heart, previous weight, 
um, waist circumference, it calculated the BMR for you. You can put in the SpO2 percentage if, if you've checked that. Um, so really the key information under general and then there's other sections that I think are, are pretty self-explanatory. You've got your urine dipstick test, you can say nothing abnormal detected or you can choose to enter the metrics. We have the cholesterol heart function, glucose, diabetes. Um, if it is a female, there will be a, a section for, um, for Ghani notes that I can show. I just want to open, uh, let's see. I don't know all the names of my heart. I think there's a Susan in the system. No, okay. Um, but really it's, it's just a, an easy way for you to capture the, the vitals and metrics. And this will all appear on the file when you're done. So uh, we've also got Jackold. So if you if you do use Jackold, you can show those options and you can simply click yes, no, no, yes. I'm conscious I'm probably going, going fast again, but really all I'm showing is that you can capture this information. It also then is part of the patient record and you can see the trend over time, which is, which is quite nice. Um, if I scroll down, I can see the weight, I can see the BMR, waist circumference, that type of thing. And as I mentioned before, if it's um, a child, you'll see the, the growth charts as well. So that's the examination section. If I uh, carry on down on the examination, we'll see the template questions specific to COVID. So it's got the ENT here, respiratory, CVS, abdominal. Some of these questions are dynamic. Again, we're not doctors, we worked with doctors. So it was about getting this 80% correct um, and then allowing you if there's any additional information to type it. So if I say chest clear, no, it'll ask additional questions such as added sounds. If I say equal entry, no, It'll then say whether it ask, is it localized, generalized? And you can say localized and you can say where it's localized. Uh, you can add a note to it. So once you get familiar with, with the templates, it really becomes quick and easy and doesn't interfere with, you know, working with the patient um, and consulting with the patient. Okay, so that's that's the template side. Just to, to illustrate, if I, if I remove the COVID one, um, I will choose, let's do a hypertensive chronic follow-up for hypertension. Immediately you'll see that the questions are different. So it's got risk factors, complications. This is under symptoms. If I go to the examination, it's got your general examination, CVS, respiratory, et cetera, et cetera. We have a body system one, which is really popular because it's the, the same. It shows you all the relevant systems and you can just say nothing normal detected, nothing abnormal, or then go into one in CVS and then expand it and, and complete some notes. Okay, so that's that's the consultation section. When you hit finish, this then go, you can set it to either go to your admin person, the claim will get generated and go to your admin person and they can review it and send it to the medical aid. Or if, it can go directly to, to the medical aid scheme and be processed. So I can just click finish at the top here, claim goes off. When Brian walks out to the front staff, uh, they can say everything's processed, you don't know anything, or uh, subsequently you, they can say, you, you know, 400 grand wasn't covered. Um, uh, you can also send a note to your admin person saying, you know, please collect outstanding money. That's an example or apply 10% discount, whatever it might be. Again, to my original point, while this is clinically rich, it has to work with the admin side of the practice. Otherwise, you're always gonna be at odds with, with how the practice works and that's the last thing that you want. And, and Jared, we, we have another question um, which you, you touched on earlier um, around um, the, the accessibility of the of the program on different devices. So are you looking at exploring accessing the program on a smartphone? Yes, absolutely. So so you can access it currently on a smartphone. There's we've we've designed a slimmed trimmed version of it to work nicely on a phone. So so what you can do is it'll have a mobile friendly way of, of opening the patient file. 
checking if any pathology results have come. Uh, you can, the one thing doctors, uh, design doctors stressed is being able to generate a prescription and sending that off to the patient. So if you get a phone call from the patient, I need a repeat script, emergency, you can go on your phone, generate the script, you can, you can check their file, see what the previous uh, script, the prescription was, generate it and email it off to them. Um, so you can view the records, do pathology, um, and it's, it's a nice, slim, easy to use. You can also then open the full version if you want to. Um, there's assessing for that too. Thanks. Same with the iPad. Um, just to note, you can, we also support our tablets really. Okay, the, the next thing I want to show, I'm conscious of time, um, and I always promise Yvonne I won't speak too much. Uh, the other thing is the um, telehealth. Now, there are a lot of telehealth solutions out there. Um, a lot of doctors are using WhatsApp, Zoom, um, whole, you know, other third parties. What we've tried to do is, is, again, speak to the simplicity. The way it works is when an admin person on the admin side um, checks a patient in or adds a patient to the calendar, they will indicate that it is a telehealth consult. So we'll see here for Brian Smithers, there's a little a play button on the admin person side so they're aware. Uh, myself as the doctor, I can quickly see my waiting room down the right hand side here. So even if I'm in a consultation, I quickly want to see what's happening in the practice. I can see how many patients are waiting for me, but at the same time, I can see that one of them is for, for telehealth. Um, it, important to note that even if you're in a file, if someone phones in, you can quickly open a, another record you can, you can see if you have any pathology results that have arrived, any new ones for the day will appear here. Um, there's, a, there's a support center, or you can toggle through the, the consultation that you're busy doing. Okay, so I'm gonna launch the, the telehealth just to, to show you how it works. Um, I'll open Brian Smithers. Yvonne, I don't know if you're gonna connect or not. Uh, just so you can see what it looks like with a patient there. But when I open Brian's file, it'll show uh, telehealth consult here. I'll click on that. It'll, it'll open the window. Uh, the way it works is the patient would have got an SMS saying your appointment is at four o'clock. And then at five to four, they'll get another SMS saying, please don't forget your appointment with um, Dr. Harold Bridge and I example the patient has, will just have to click on the link. There's no installing anything, which is a, a big problem with certain patients and trying to get them to install Zoom and, and different things. You don't have to use WhatsApp and share your, your number. So you don't get uh, patients getting your, your personal number. Um, and at the same time, it is extremely safe uh, technology for any tech buffs out there. It's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So no one can listen in or access it. And it's, it's only between the doctor and the patient. So I just want to quickly so I'll say join consultation as the doctor. It'll open my consultation flow here. Um, if I do want to mute on, on maybe this one, oh, maybe won't get feedback, but I can then see the, yeah, I can hear you. They, they won't be able to though. So I can see the patient here. Zoom is using my camera, otherwise you'd see me there. And I can say to the patient, you know, what brings you? They might say, um, I'm here for uh, a general, well, let's say I'm having anxiety. Can click on the anxiety template. I can ask them some questions. I can carry on with the flow. If I wanna see in a full screen, I can open it into the full screen mode. Um, or I can carry on like, yeah, you can minimize, expand it. So, so it works really well. Thanks, Yvonne. You can, I'll, I'll cut you off there. Um, what's, what's important is that it doesn't, that you can do it while carrying on with your, your consultation flow here. Um, the other important thing is this will change color when the patient is there. So you as the doctor, you can look at your waiting room and see, oh, Brian Smith uh, or Brian Smithers is on um, the, the call as well. You don't want to be connecting to, to like, you know, if you're using Zoom, you connect and then the patient's not there and then you leave it open, another patient comes in and then the patient joins on the Zoom, but you already have a patient there. So it's, it's nice that you can only connect uh, when you know that the patient is there and waiting. And it was very simple for me as a patient to, to connect. I know it's probably difficult to see, but that's literally what I 
what I as a patient did on my phone. I clicked that little green button, it says join consult, and I connected with um, Dr. Harold Bridge. Very, very simple. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the patient will get a, a link, they'll get a reminder link. As Yvonne said, you just click on it and it opens in the browser. They don't have to do anything fancy. Okay, so, so if I just, I, I, didn't, I haven't even covered everything yet. Uh, we have a COVID tracker, so you can keep track of, of patients who, who's negative, who's positive, what, whether they've recovered. You can look at your high risk patients. You can SMS them, you can add notes. We've, we brought this out uh, by request. Some of the doctors are saying they're struggling to, to keep track of who they've sent for a test, who they're waiting for results for, Oh, was there someone who was admitted to hospital, that type of thing. So we've, we've built an, a COVID tracker and really the COVID tracker is going to evolve to a chronic condition tracker. That's the, uh, the long-term view. Don't only show me my, my COVID patients. Hopefully that'll be not so relevant in the next while, but show me my asthmatics, my diabetics or my chronics or my high risk, that type of thing. So it's the first step in, in that journey because really we, the, what we try to do is, is work with doctors to keep telling us what to build. As of stress, we are, we are techies, not, not clinicians. I mean, Jared, so, just, just, yeah. just on that, and you were talking about, again, the seamlessness with the, the, the PMA, the MindPeer system. Um, and I know on, 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 this, on this side, um, new functionality that's been launched is where you can um, identify patients with a specific chronic condition based on an ICD-10 code and do what we call a, a patient outreach uh, communication by SMS or, or email and get those patients back, especially now, you know, during, um, during the, the pandemic time when those very patients are the ones that should be coming in or, you know, avoiding going to doctors, which is absolutely not, uh, not, not great for the patient. So that's yeah. also a cool functionality that exists in my NPS that supports the, the clinical. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing and, and just just check my notes. Um, really, what I what I want to stress the the key themes is the the integration with admin. You can see it not only from from the calendar, but being able to send the claim through, um, being able to see which if a patient has benefits, what medicines are covered based on their formulary or, or their scheme that they're on, and all of that gets managed from the admin side. Um, it's about having that rich clinical patient record so you can you know when when Edna or Frank walks in I can immediately scan their file and tell you and know everything I need to know about them scroll down see when they were here last all the clinical information I captured when they were previously here and, and that I've shown you um, the flow has got to be configurable when choosing an EMR if, if you go with a different EMR just make sure that it can be configured for your needs um, telehealth while it's, it's really nice to have the option of, of telehealth um, with, with patients um, and it's a really quick and, and easy thing to do. And again, you don't have to manage it as the doctor, it's managed on the admin side. Um, you just have to keep following your waiting room and, and seeing what's next. Um, yeah, and I think those are the, the key points I, I really wanted to stress. Well, I see we, we've got a few a few more questions. Um, I, I was listening to you so attentively, I, I missed I missed two. Um, uh, so, as part of the package, um, the lab results from the lab, such as Pathcare, are automatically downloaded to the patient's profile. However, there are other labs which are not currently on your system. Um, what's the way forward? Yeah, awesome. So. What we've tried to do is for the labs that we don't have is make it easy to to just drag and drop a result that you get onto the file. So if you get a, a path result, you can drag it into the record and add it there. We've also um, set up a, an admin interface for uh, your administrator who can attach files as well. So if you want them to attach a, a path result to a record, they can. The The plan is to go to, to more path, path labs. Um, Right now, we've we've tried to get the biggest ones first for I think for obvious reasons. But the idea is to to try and enable it for everyone. Um, we've we've it's been built in such a way that it's all standardised. So the way Pathcare sends it to us, Lance at Ampath, uh, Half a Mark will it's all the same system. So we can start integrating with other Path results, uh, Path Labs. Cool. 
Um, I, I hope, uh, Dr. Lombard, I'm going to do your question justice. Um, I have uh, another program to go over to HealthBridge. What happens to existing files and history? Will all detail need to um, be done all over or can existing medical detail be transferred? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I think so it we, might be, yeah, clinic, yeah. Okay, so in, in terms of the, the data transfer and migration, if it's um, in the, the demographic information, so the patient name, what medical aid they're on, date of birth, all of that, uh, depending on what system you're on, but all the big ones, we can, we can help facilitate transferring that. We have a data team that specifically looks at doing that. The clinical information, that very much depends on, on what system you're on now. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, without knowing that offhand, um, we don't really tr migrate clinical data, but we have uh, ways of, of working to help you transition um, depending on what system you're using now. I'd love to be able to tell you that we just take it from, from any system and, and put it on, but we, yeah, every EMR kind of structures the information differently. Some can generate a PDF of the patient record and then we can actually attach it to the, the system. Um, so it really depends on, on what system you're on. Yeah, maybe Dr. Lombard, if um, you know, if you're happy to, we can we can reach out to you and we can chat a, a bit further in terms of, like Jared mentioned, what program you're currently using. Um, and then an earlier question, uh, I just want to, uh, Dr. mentioned there were ten thousand. Let me just find it. Oh, practice has like ten thousand yellow files. Very busy practice. What is the best way of incorporating the old data into the new into the new system? Yeah, cool. That's that's a that's a good question. It also depends on the practice setup. So what we've seen work well, as I mentioned earlier, is not to try bulk ten thousand. Try take all ten thousand over two weeks, or whatever. You'll you'll have a, an uprising in your practice from the admin people. What's worked well is that you do it per file, and you do the a, a sticker or indication on the file which ones you do and don't want scanned. Uh, we also have a separate login for admin people uh, where they can. Like, you know, whenever there's free time, take a file, scan it in, attach it to the patient, do the next one. So you can slowly get get through it. Um, what what has worked best that we've seen is, as I mentioned, doing it as the patient arrives, file by file. Um, and then if at the end of two or three years, you can start archiving the ones that potentially have, aren't coming back in. I mean, and Jared, we've explored options of like working with with the metro file of doing the bulk the bulk scanning, but it was just it was just too costly for, um, if I can recall, just just too costly for for practice to do that. Yeah, and and a lot of the files wouldn't necessarily need to be scanned in, um, and some of the depending on how you structure the file, what you want in, what you don't want in. It, it got a bit too too clunky to use a, a bulk system. Um, and we've got a, a cool idea that's come through uh, from Dr. Mokomani. I hope I'm pronouncing your, your surname correctly. Um, are you looking into the possibility of having similar sessions for our receptionists and also awarding them um, with the certificate of attendance? It's a cool idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. I think like that. We'll I'm take that to the team. Uh, yeah, I'll take that to to our to our team. Yeah, and and doing webinars like this has become so normal. Yeah, uh, my wife's in book club, like next door. It's just it's like ridiculous. But, <laughs> but if there's one, there's if there's one involved, Joe, it doesn't count the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As there always is with a book club. Of course. Are there any other questions? Um, no, I think um, unless any, if there's any doctor that has another question for us, we're happy to, to take it. I think I've gone through all the all the questions that have come that have come through. Um, yeah, as and maybe just as a as a closeout, as I mentioned um, in the beginning, we we will be sharing um, the the recording. Dr. Lombard, I, I've made a note um, for us to reach out to you. Um, and then you'll see in the in the in the in the chat, um, uh, Eliza has popped through a um, just a quick a quick survey, and, and re really it's just you know a couple of a couple of seconds to to complete. Oh, I see we do have one more question. Let's try and squeeze that one in. 
uh, go to the bottom. The thank you. Uh, no, just a thank you, sorry. Yeah. Um, pleasure, absolute pleasure. And um, yeah, if, if you feel kindly um, complete the survey, um, yeah, that's, um, we've done well, Jared, we've got three minutes uh, to, spare. To, to, to spare. I think it's this time we're not competing with the president. The last yes. uh, webinar we hosted was when our, our president decided to address, address, address the nation. So we, yeah. we, we didn't have tough competition this, um, yeah. this evening. But, um, can, yeah, on behalf can, of Jared and I, thank you. Oh, yes. I just want to say, I know I went fast and I know I went quickly. Like the, the idea isn't to show everything, but the theme. So if you do want someone to sit and, and go a bit slower, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's someone in, the, in my team or one of our consultants or myself, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And I'll do it a lot slower. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Cool. And yeah, so on behalf of Jared and I, thank you. Um, thank you for making the time um, to, to join us um, this evening. We, 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 always, we always get great fun out of um, you know, showing and, and demoing um, our, our, our product, and we hope that you 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 enjoyed this evening's demo. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Bye.